What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in a living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Famous? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, or do I always send you? DJLittleRock.com. One more time. DJLittleRock.com. Check availability and get a free price quote, and maybe you could have me at your next event. You know I like to party with the people. The people need to be entertained. Are you not entertained? <laughs> Let me entertain you. Make your next thing a big one. Speaking of entertainment, today on the program, Michael F. Rose, Mr. Bad Horse himself. You know, it's Bad Horse, but he's a good dude. I, you know, there's a there's a whole people are complicated. You know, they have good ideas and good intentions, but they name themselves bad things. What? What is a bad horse? Maybe we'll find out today on the program. I know he, anybody that's been listening to this for a while knows that Michael F. Rose is a returning engagement. He's already a member of the What Makes You Famous family, but we're going to get to know what's going on right now with Bad Horse and Michael F. Rose. I, I know those are interchangeable. Kind of, you know, he's the lead singer. Uh, there, I know there's other members of the band, but you know, being the front man is a certain has a certain kind of special quality. And uh, yeah, he's the mouthpiece as well. <laughs> I like it. I like talking to Michael F. Rose, and you're gonna like hearing more from Michael F. Rose. So stick around. This week's shows, I will be at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas, my usual Friday night gig. It's a public gig, so if you're 21 or over, you come on out to the Rab on Friday night. The video dance party, karaoke jam. Yes, I said karaoke. You're the stars of the show every Friday night. They got a full bar. The kitchen's open. Pool tables. They got a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're doing it, you come on out to the Rab. Do it. Do it. And then on Saturday, Saturday, I'm not sure exactly what my event is on Saturday, but I'm pretty sure it's either a wedding or a private party. One of those two. I know I need to look at my planning forms and check out the music request and uh, find out what's going on Saturday night. But uh, Friday night is, is your turn to shine, your time to shine from 8 p.m. until 12.30 in the AM. I'll be at the Rab in Conway, Arkansas. Full bar, kitchens open, pool tables. They got a pool tournament on Friday nights. So if you want to try your hand at playing pool and possibly make some money while you're doing it, you come on out to the Rab. You do it. You do it. Friday night after a long week of work. Woo. Always a good time. All right. That's it for this intro. Let's get into it with Michael F. Rose. I got him on Zoom this time. So if you're listening to the audio version, check out the video version on my YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash keys. Dan zooming. <laughs> Is that a thing? Michael F. Rose of bad horse. Now I missed it, Dan. <gasps> Man. There's the face I've been wanting to see for a couple man. weeks now. Man, uh, internet is terrible. I, I'm out here in the boonies myself, so I'm using a, a um, like the Wi-Fi uh, hotspot uh, from my uh, provider, oh my from my phone provider, and that, that seems to work most of the time, but then some yeah. of the time it does not. I see you crisp and clear. I hear you. It's wonderful. Good to have you back, Michael F. Rose. If I I move this camera a little bit, it'll make me look better, but I think that's about as good as it gets, to be honest with you. He's gorgeous. Don't don't let him fool you. He's self-deprecating. I know if you're watching the video version of this, you know, you already know Michael F. Rose is a is a fancy lad. He's a good looking dude. <laughs> yeah, man. He he's kind of a bad horse. Now, before we started recording, we were going over pronouns, and and I noticed on your on your uh, Zoom, which is what we're using today, uh, you have she, her, hers. I'm guessing you're using somebody else's uh, <laughs> Zoom program. I am actually. I'm on my girls. <laughs> That's nice. It's good to have uh, partners, a team. Uh, that that you're able to uh, to substantiate to use uh, to help you out. I'm guessing that your your personal Zoom did not work. Yeah, my personal Zoom wasn't working, so we're on Ellie's, and I'm over here closer to where I'm rehearsing tonight with Bad Horse at seven. So 
Okay. So I got, and I made time to spend this time with you because we had so much fun last time, man. I just couldn't wait to do it again. Well, good. I mean, I, I know. Okay. That means you only have maybe an hour or, or, or maybe even less, but, um, oh, you know, last time we talked, we went over, you know, where you're at, where you're from now it's time to talk about, you know, where you're, where you're at right now and where you're heading. You know, you say you're going to, to rehearsal. Are you rehearsing for a, a certain show? Do you have a show that's coming up real soon? I do actually. I have a few, but the one I had an amazing meeting today with the president, Michelle, the vice president, Lynn, um, one of the board members, um, Joe, of the CUNA Chamber of Commerce, because we're headlining CUNA Days on August third, which is a big, big event. And then, and then it got better. It was the coolest thing. Um, Joe, being a videographer, I was talking about this concept video that I've been trying to put together for Still America, which you can hear if you just search Michael F. Rose or Bad Horse, you can hear Still America. And I wrote Still America about Buna, Idaho, when I moved there. And how horse do bend Idaho feels. I don't want to, I can't, you know, detract anything from my wonderful friends up there. But it was really about Buna and walking the green belt. And I went through hell a couple years ago. And I was always just walking down there and talking to God and trying to work it out, you know, like we so often do. And anyway, lo and behold, thank you, baby. The uh, Kenya Chamber of Commerce is supporting, uh, we're going to shoot Still America. We're going to have a, our last pre-production meeting is July 1st. And then we're going to start shooting it. We're going to incorporate the entire town. I'm going to be walking down Main Street in Kuna, Idaho with Everybody in Kuhn, Idaho, who wants to be in this music video walking behind me, we got the kids from the dance studio coming. And then we also have this wonderful opportunity. And the idea popped into my head when I when I thought of this, Dan. Yes, sir. When um, they're like, okay, you're the headliner, but what we want you to do is at 1030 stop and then the fireworks start. And I thought, no, wait a minute. What if we had a drone in front of the stage when the fireworks start and I'm singing, there's only two street lights in my hometown. And then that drone flies up and you see the fireworks. And then they took it further. And Joe had a great idea. We're shooting the music video and it won't be edited and done until well after CUNA days, August 3rd. And by the way, be there. It's one of the greatest events going on in Southwest Idaho. But his idea was we'll do a little pre-production cut of it and we'll shoot it on the big movie screen that they have down on the green belt while it's going on. So the Chamber of Commerce, the entire city, for the most part, I can't speak for everybody. I hope you're all excited about it because I know we are. And just so many wonderful things going on right now. It's uh, it, it's the culmination of being relentless. And the, the way I described it to Lynn, I was telling Ellie this earlier this morning before all this came to fruition. Um, when you find your passion and you start working it and, you know, you, you get past this point of trying to do it and you just become it. And then there's no other way for it to go other than if you quit. The only way you can fail in life is to quit. Because the lessons that we learn when we fail are the very lessons that we need to learn how to do what it is we're trying to do. And when I was walking that green belt, I heard God say in my spirit, not in my ears, because then I checked myself in somewhere. But <laughs> I heard God say adversity is the class we have to take and pass to get to the very thing that we told him that we wanted. Keep walking. Keep walking. And every day I got up. And discipline myself. I work for myself. You know, I could, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't lay in bed all day. That wouldn't happen. I, so I just got up and I just started building this business. And now we're seeing the fruit of it. And we have opportunity next June to play uh, the Temecula Balloon and Wine Festival. So all these big festivals. We're actually Lynn and I are working on a partnership where we're going to create a music festival in Southwest Idaho and. We have access. Um, she she had Brad Paisley out at the Temecula Balloon and Wine Festival a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a really big, amazing show. I, I, the, the one that impressed me the most, and I think you'll feel me on this, Dan, is uh, last year that she had John Waite open for Night Ranger. Noise. 
right? And then and then Night Ranger opened for, and I'm almost ashamed of myself because I can't remember who the headliner was. But it, you know, she, she's had Leonard Skinner, so she she has all these bands that these working bands, mm -hmm. these warriors that have been doing this, you know, for years and years. And and I'm just so blessed to finally be pursuing my passion full time and doing it. Because as you know, I think I told you before, I mean, I, I iced my career for a long time to get my kids raised. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all raised and they're all doing great. So now it's big daddy's turn. Yeah. Back to you. Anybody that paid attention to the last podcast that we did knows that you're very spiritual and anybody that paid that uh, followed all the links that I told them to follow, uh, you, they know on your Facebook page, that you're walking the walk. You you have, you know, God in your heart, and maybe you don't hear Him directly, but spiritually in in your heart you hear Him. And you were talking about uh, Green Belt, and there it is. Three days ago, you posted that you were talking about walking in Green Belt and getting the feelings. And and three days three days ago, what an amazing thirty five. Got to find out more about that. Are you thirty five? What the what's what's thirty five three days ago? Are you trying you're you're prying into my private life now, Dan. It's right there. It's for the world to see. Uh, it, it says uh, it says it right there on your Facebook page, and I'm very well, excited that 35. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. Um, you know, sometimes when we find and I've done a lot of uh, studying. I've studied Ram Dass for a long time, and one of the stories he tells, and I'll, I'll cut to the chase on that so I can get to the meat of what I'm saying is. Uh, Eat it like it is. He was with his family in a restaurant. They were eating, and somebody wanted more sauce on this wonderful Italian meal. And the waiter looked over and said, eat it like it is. So his whole life with Ram Dass' family, that was a joke. If he didn't like something, they'd say, eat it like it is. But then he took it one further, and he said, love it like it is. Can you love it like it is? Can you love the world like it is? Um, and I'll refine that. Can you love the people where they are? Can you love someone based on where they are? And it doesn't always mean that we're walking to the end of our lives. Some people were walking down the street a block or two. Some people were walking the extra mile. And some people were walking home all the way. Um, I think our kids are examples of that and our, our wives, hopefully. But sometimes relationships can be challenging. And I, and I had one that was very challenging to uh, a very special woman who we just could not get the wheels rolling at the same time it just didn't work so i had a choice to either spend the rest of my life trying to figure that out or mm -hmm. let that go and create space for what i for who i am and when i finally did that man it was the hardest thing ever and i had finally resigned myself to the fact that you know having been married yeah i always say I, i've been married 20 years twice you know, that's not a bad resume. It's also not a good one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I had finally decided that I was just done. I, I, I wasn't interested um, in finding someone. I, I didn't want anybody to get in the way of my purpose because I had finally become purpose driven in, in my music and to be faithful to, to his art, which God's art is love. And as far as spirituality, First John 4, 8 says, for he who does not love does not know God, for God is love, period. And that starts with loving yourself. And I always say this, please, 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 if you're watching this, don't believe who the world has convinced you that you are, because there's a real good chance that you probably don't even know. Mm -hmm. You're not a terrible dad or a terrible mom or an alcoholic or a drug addict. These are just things that we've done. Who you truly are is love, a, a, a creation of God of love to love yourself and if you can find that place you can love yourself the healing there is so enormous that you find yourself not needing anything else well going back and to what you I were saying to, going back to what you were saying about ram da saying eat it like it is there's two schools of thought because sometimes if you do ask for more sauce uh, the chef will look at you and say you like the sauce the sauce is good i give you more sauce that means if you're going through life and you don't like the way your life is going, you can add a little bit more sauce and change it. 
uh, go get some. Uh, what if if you don't like the flavor of what you're you're doing right now? Add a little salt to it. You know, maybe maybe you do need to change if you're uh, if you're feeling grumpy all day. I try to wake up and and have no one steal my joy. I even said that to my boss today. I said, uh, "Don't let anybody steal your joy." And he goes, "I'll do my best." You know, it's it's nice to spread that message of love and joy and spirituality and, and, you know, knowing that, that we're not in this world alone, but, uh, and even, you know, the tattoo on your arm that you just showed, we, the people, it's not just the top of, uh, of the, 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 yeah, the declaration. It's, uh, the preamble. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, the preamble. I've, yeah. I've decided just now because of you, I'm going to put a big heart here. Because this we is all of us. It's not the right wing. It's not the left wing. Because remember, the extreme ends of these wings are, it's the same bird. And, and you know what? We love you too, even though you guys are kind of nuts. <laughs> um, but I've got crazy family members I love. I just don't hang around them. Um, I, I think back to what you're saying. I, I, I think you can. If you can control how much sauce you want to spice your life up with, go for it. But then even in that, you know... Um, Everything in moderation, right? So Not too much. Not too I, much. I'm sauce. talking about the thing. Yeah, I'm talking about the things you can't control. You can't control getting more. Somebody won't give you what you're trying to get from them. And a lot of times we project our, our idea of love on people who just don't understand. And and love languages are different. But anyway, back to the point. So right when I had resigned myself to the fact that I was done, mm. I met the love of my life. I, I met and believe me, and, and no offense, I, I'm great friends with my first wife, hopefully in time. My my second ex-wife and I can at least be amicable. She's a little she's a little bit out of shape. But I I just I think twenty years investing in something that wasn't bearing any fruit, it was all the time that I had because it and it was tough. It was tough to uh to really love someone and let them go. And what I told her was, and this is for all of us, is I'm going to give you a God now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting in God's way. I'm not good at doing God's job. I am not. I suck at it. I'm not him. I didn't create anybody. I just really, I think there comes a point where you have to let it go. And once you let it go, it creates a space in you. Because, you know, your cup runneth over, right? But what's it running over with? It's full of all this other stuff. So I kind of clean, like Christ told the Pharisees, the outside of your cup is clean, but the inside's filthy. So I clean, I really, I mean, I was scraping porcelain, man. I was trying to clean that cup. And then I wasn't in a hurry to fill it up. I wanted to wait and see what God's will was instead of mine. Because mm -hmm. I already tried mine, and mine sucked, obviously. It didn't work. And and then I met Ellie. And I met Ellie on a Friday night and Saturday morning. I wrote a song called New Song, My Ellie. And I just sent it to Sony yesterday, and it's going to be our our next. It's going to be Michael Ifro's release uh, through Sony Orchard, and it comes out uh, July nineteenth. Yeah, I saw so, something about that and, on your YouTube, you know, and it's. Crazy. I thought, oh, I, yeah, that, yeah, that was a rough. Was, I what happened? Yeah. I, I put that up there. Go ahead, Dan. I'm sorry. No, Go no, ahead. I saw something about that on your YouTube, and I thought, well. Who is this Ellie? Uh, that's something brand new. But going back to Ram Dass, you didn't eat it like it is. You uh, changed. You found a new meal. You took. You sent that meal back, and you ordered a new meal. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a good. You got a good meal now. But tell me about the uh, the song that you wrote about it. Well, it it stemmed from my experience at the Green Belt, where I was walking down there. And I was having these conversations with God. And the first verse says, put away your pictures yesterday. Took a walk to have a talk with God along the way. He said, lonely only means it's time to pray. That he would have this time with me. Then he went on to say, I heard when you were crying, saw you broken on the floor. That there will come a day there'll be no crying anymore. He whispered, love is patient. Son, be brave enough to start. I'll put a new song in your heart. Power, man. What, what was Elle's reaction to that? Did you sing that to her the next day and Saturday? Um, 
<laughs> she just said, I'm crying right now. <laughs> oh, oh, my. Uh, that's And that's the power that a song can do. Hey, but even more so when a song is written about you from the heart, uh, that it's got to mean something. Nobody ever wrote a song for me. But, uh, you know, so, but, but I'm glad that Elle's got that song. I'll work on one. I, I love you, Dan. I love you. I'll, I'll work on the song that, for you. That was not fishing. No, 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 no. You have an L. You have. But we'll get you. I'll, I'll, I'll write your, uh, I'll write your intro music. I, I have a great lick that I've been waiting to use forever that I, about 15 years ago, tried to sell to a car dealership and they ended up plagiarizing it and doing like a terrible version of it. But well, I'll, I'll I'll give you a little intro music for the show. That would be fantastic for the for about more than five hundred shows. I've been using the same public domain intro music. So uh, yeah, uh, a Michael F. Rose Bad Horse original would be marvelous, absolutely marvelous. As yeah. you're, I mean, you know, uh, you know, people that yeah, my word. that have looked you up already know you're a talented man. You got that rock and roll down. Uh, you know, the, the country rocking it's very America, you know, and, and funny. All right. I don't know. Lover or hater. I, uh, partied with Arkansas's governor, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders last Saturday night. And, um, you know, whether you like her politics oh, or right you right. don't like her politics, I have turned a, a whole, uh, she's, she she won my heart. Okay, she is such a nice lady. I'm DJing a, a wedding in the governor's mansion, and she, you know I, she was supposed to come by. I thought, okay, she's going to come by and she's going to uh, uh, announce the bride and groom, and probably just scoot off to her room. No, she stayed the whole night, danced, yeah. even asked for some songs. Uh, so a uh, uh, love letter to Sarah Huckabee Sanders. You know whether uh, you know as a person. As a person, what do you like her politics or not? But, um, yeah, and I think she's doing a great job in, in Arkansas, you know, but, uh, notwithstanding, uh, Idaho. I feel, that's what I hear. Yeah, it, as a person, she's a Go good ahead. person. But, uh, you were talking about, uh, festivals, man, the Kuna Festival. Uh, I talked to a, a guy yesterday who's a, a great guitarist, but he also wants to branch out into agency and maybe make a festival here in this town. But I love as a consumer, as a listener, as a fan, a festival can not only bring the fans of Bad Horse, of Michael F. Rose, but whoever you have on that bill is going to get a whole new set of ears. Uh, to listen to festivals, so playing festivals, I I imagine it's got to be a whole lot of fun. You don't have to, you know, maybe you're contributing three or four songs. I don't know. Are you doing a whole set, uh, 20, 30, 40 minutes, or what? What are you doing at a festival? Yeah, um, August. Well, August thirteenth of days, um, and it's so much fun because it's like I'm having fun with my family down there. Because I I know a lot of people in town. And I love them all. It's my hometown. I wasn't born and raised there, but I call it my hometown because it, it feels like home, it feels like where I was born, which was uh, Glendora, California, yeah. you know, a, a, a few years ago. But um, no, we get an hour and a half show. You know, if something wonderful happened too, uh, uh, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Steve Fulton at Audio Lab Studio in Boise, hooked me up with a, a, a new good friend of mine that I've known for a couple of years now, uh, Quasar. It's his nickname. We call him Richard. And we did Hyde Park Street Fair last year, but they had us play at like four o'clock. And when we came off stage, um, some of the uh, some of the roadies came up and they're like, man, you guys should be headlining. You guys should be headlining. And I go, well, you know, well, we'll see down the road We're we're new. Nobody really knew. Bad Horse has only been an entity for one year. Yeah, but the, the musicians I mean, in the Bad Horse are are well seasoned you, you've been around the block a few times and you oh, you yeah. already mentioned in the beginning of this podcast <laughs> you're going to practice and practice does make perfect now you t- you said that you've learned a lot from your failures i don't call them failures either i take nasa's uh, vernacular of uh it's our first attempt at success all the failures are your first attempt yeah, at right. success i love right. that uh, and and I, I take that to heart and I use that in my everyday life. So if, if I feel like I failed, no, no, no. I, or, or, or what is it? Edison said he found a thousand ways not to make a light bulb. I was just going to say. Exactly. Right. I, I like that I, so I, much. I think that's really it. 
You know, my measure was uh, when I was talking to Linda today, she goes, you know, when I listen to your music, it sounds like a combination of Bob Seger and Sting. Yes. I can and agree. I thought, as far as them being my musical mentors and, you know, you know, having grown up, you know, without uh, a, a father, you know, oh, I never knew my father. Remember in Nemo, the sharks, right? Yeah. But I, I met my dad at 40, and he's now one of my very best friends. Love him to death. Cool. Um, but it, it, it's that it's that feel, and and when you when you set the bar as high as I did, I mean, give me a break, Bob Seger and Sting. Um, I, I studied the masters, and if you want to, um, uh, there, I, I read in a book years ago. Uh, someone said, um, if you want to get good at something. Find someone who's already done it and do what they do. It's, we're not building rockets over here. You know, we, we don't have to. And and if you have a natural talent and a God-given gift and a propensity to create, like today in the meeting at the chamber, I was talking to artists, Joe, the videographer, artists, just different forms of art. And, and the thing that I love the most, Dan, is, I love being a, a part of the arts community, and it's not just music. Mm. It's uh, as with my girl, Ellie, who just got her master's in the arts. She's a teacher. Yes, That's I saw art, that. Um, congrats on your receiving your master's, Ellie. Ellie yeah. May. <laughs> Ellie yeah. Ray, not Ellie May. Ellie Ray. Ellie Ray Rose, probably here pretty relatively soon i think i just did i just let the cat out of the bag again i think i did it's on the facebook um, page you put it out there for the world to see you're excited about oh, it I already did that yes <laughs> yes you you've made it known to the world I'm, and i'm not very shy about it yeah oh my goodness you want to yell it from the mountains when you find a good person to be with you go oh, i want to shout it from the mountaintops, uh, from the from the depths of the sea to the mountaintops and in, beyond, in the space. Can I yell it into space? No one will hear you scream. Nope. Okay. So uh, let's come back down to earth a little bit <laughs> and and talk about things that are happening. Why? Do we have, do we have to? We don't have, we have to. to. Come back down to earth. I remember the first time we talked in our interview, you were talking about how much you loved your wife. And, and yeah. I remember thinking, man, that. I'm so proud of you. You you work hard. You 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 do your best to be a good man and take care of your family. And I'd always done that, but I was I was in the void then. I mm -hmm. was really in the void, and I just admire good men like you who do everything they can. There's a Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Do your best to present yourself before God as one approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, correctly dividing the word of God." That means don't teach it wrong. But it also means just do your best because we all fall short of the glory of God, right? So the idea here is if you do your best, God knows your heart, and that's enough. He'll fill in he'll fill in the rest. That's why that's what Christ was teaching. That's why Christ died on the cross. I mean, if people don't believe that, they probably and more than likely, in my experience, when I share what I share, mm -hmm. they've been mistaught. And Ooh. just because you've been mistaught, just because somebody you went to a church where they tell you two plus two is five, mm -hmm. doesn't mean Christ isn't real. Well, like you say, you know, uh, Yeshua Hamashiach. He, like you say, it took you a couple of times to get the to find the right one. And yeah, I dated a whole lot. Uh, I didn't get it on the first try. And I think I, I heard a while back that uh, when every every girl that a man uh, dates is training him more and more better for the, for the next person. Uh, you know, just training him until ultimately he, he ends up with a wife who gets the best version of the man. So I guess I went through a lot of husband training uh, in my uh in my life uh, to to get where I'm at. So uh, yeah, and, and you know, my parents uh, taught yeah. me to to work. Uh, you know, gave me the independence. Uh, said uh, you want something, you go right. work for it. So it's a hustle. And uh, I, I wish uh, I wish that for everyone. Know, know that that it's not going to be handed to you. You're going to have to work for it. It's that adversity thing. It's like when we go to the gym, you can stand there and listen to the radio, and you're not going to get bigger. You're not going to get in better shape. You got to go. No pain, no gain, man. That's just real. And 
I hope the same thing for my prior wife, my ex-wife. I hope that I was a training class where she can go find who she needs to be to finally be happy. And, and, and that's the thing. Um, when you love someone and it doesn't work out, I don't stop loving them. It just gets like recompartmentalized, if that's a word. You, you have to put that love in the appropriate way. And the way to let go of it for me is to say, I love you enough to just see you happy, whatever that takes. And that goes for everybody, you know, because we're all so different. You know, it's it's really hard when, um, and especially me being an artist, I mean, I'm not certainly, uh, I don't know, I, I can't really evaluate myself as far as being outlandish goes, but I think it's um, living with an artist, is it probably somewhat complicated it's 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 a challenge i am you know not to say too much but i mean i have times where even in the time that ellie and i have been together where when i get back to purpose driven and i just kind of i don't physically disappear but i just dive back into into the art because when when the music comes it, it's it it comes. It's there. It, it, it's. I can't deny it. Some of these songs, I hear melodies when I'm sleeping. I dream music. I have mm -hmm. a soundtrack of my life. I have music. And, and I don't listen. And Ellie loves music constantly. It's something we've had to find the middle on. I hear music constantly, so I don't listen to music very often. Yeah, you're doing the right job for you. Your your mind works a, a different kind of way. Uh, a person who is dating a creative needs to know that a creative, uh, th their brain works differently. If you don't see something and are not inspired to make a song about it, then you're not in the right business. If you're a movie maker, if you're a book writer, any kind of artistic creator, if you don't uh, you know, see in the beauty of a sunset, uh, something that you could create in your medium, you know, draw a writer, uh, an artist will make a painting out of it, uh, you know, or, or a movie out of it or a book out of it, or you will make a song out of it. You met this wonderful woman. You were inspired. She was your muse and you had to make a song about it. You know, all this conversation that we're having right now, it's probably putting little, little tidbits, little thoughts in your head. You might make a song about it. You know, with the the thoughts, the random thoughts that come into my head as you're talking, you you know, you might make a song about it. And yeah, it takes a little bit away if you're going on tour, if you go and do a show, unless you have a, a partner who's wanting to go to those shows, it's going to take it's going to take away from that relationship a little bit. But when you come back together, you're going to be that much stronger. I guess uh, what is it? separation makes the heart grow fonder. I've heard that before, too. Whenever I come home from a show, my wife is very happy Absolutely. to see me. You yeah. know, she says, how was the show? And she's excited to hear about that. And if it's dinner time, she'll have dinner for me. You know, I have a good partner, and it sounds like you have a good partnership. That's so important. This pursuit of happiness, it doesn't guarantee you're going to get the happiness, but it seems like you have gotten that happiness. Finally, finally, you, you know, you, you got it. Well, it's interesting because there's, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength, right? So if the Lord is love, so the joy of love, I've always felt joy, but happiness and sadness, I mean, that comes and goes. Monday, you got to go to work. You, you don't like it. Friday, you're happy. I don't hinge my joy on happy or sad. They're two different entities. And when I, when I hear you say that, I just can't help but think that when, when I'm creating, I really am, I'm just absorbing what's happening in the world, audibly, visually, and then it just happens. It, it, it's its own process. And I was listening to, was it, I, th I think I was listening to Joe Rogan earlier driving over to the farm to go to the office. And he was talking about, like, is where does creation and where does being creative come from? You know, where do these seeds of creation, where do these things emanate from? Mm -hmm. And it's a great question. So I really feel like the, uh, 
like the, the, the in between, because I didn't create, you know, this dimension. I didn't create me. So the, the gifts that God gives us, I didn't create you, right? I didn't create anybody. I mean, I, even my children, I didn't create. I was in on the procreation, but I, I'm not the creator. So, so when you give that glory to, to God and you give that glory to love, there's a freedom there where you you don't have to worry about all of the nonsense anymore. If, if, and it's a practice. Everything is a work in progress. And like you said, coming home, having a solid partner, somebody who loves and supports what you're doing. And and I have that in, in a lot of different forms and fashion. I have Ellie. I have, I have Bob Umfritz, my bass player. Um, and one of my very best friends in the world, Mark Hume, my lead guitar player, also one of my very best friends, Flip Perkins, my brother. I'd love Flip to death. He, and, and this Bad Horse Band, the, this is a collective of artists. Mm -hmm. This isn't these guys playing backup music behind Michael Rose. The, what these guys bring to this project is as, as substantial as what I bring. There, there's no more, no less in this. And... And when and, and it really starts with cutting the nonsense out of your life, so to speak, and creating that space for all these other. And I found myself in a meeting today again, like I told you, with other creatives that that got on board with doing. I mean, we're, we got drone shots and music in the music video. This thing is going to be mind boggling. We've got Rise Up TV tour um, in uh, April. 2025, which is a reality series. They want me to star in a reality series where we go. It's a seven day event. It's five shows. You know, it, everything, it, everything, the synchronicity of it all is just phenomenal. And I, I'll never take it for granted, nor will I. I mean, I'll get used to it. I'm already kind of used to it because I understand how it functions. Well, with so the reality show, with watching, the reality so show, I see Dan. Yeah, with the reality show, you need to practice your Ozzy Osbourne. Uh, can you go uh, doddering around the house in a robe and say, Ellie Ray! I can go, Ellie! 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 <laughs> I need some hot chocolate, Ellie! <laughs> well, first of, all, first of all, I wouldn't raise my voice at her. Oh, you're Thank so you. sweet. Second of all, um, she is such a tender heart that I, I, I'm just surrounded by, and you included, man, I'm telling you that I have this wonderful team around me now of just like the sweetest people in the world. And if you don't think that they exist, trust me, guys, they do. I'm surrounded by them. They're still there. Don't believe the narrative that, that the, the, the news tries to sell you. I don't care, you know, Fox or CNN. Different wings of the same bird. It's all bullshit. Don't buy that that stuff. Don't let them divide us by color, religion, or any other thing, because all they're trying to do is keep us down here fighting while they run away with the pot of gold. And you know what? As far as the gold goes, they can have the gold. Because of gold and silver, there is no... There's, there's How do I put this? There's nothing more valuable not only to God himself who created us, then love. So if we stay in love, we win. We've already won. Christ won. He won the battle for us. Stay in love and, and lo with healthy boundaries, right? I'm not saying go love everybody if they're mistreating <laughs> you. Now you got to draw the line. Even God himself wrote Exodus chapter 20, which are the Ten Commandments of God. And the first five are spiritual law. The second five are just a really good idea for humanity. So if we can work, do our best to function within those parameters, then we're creating a culture of love. And that's what the Still America video through the, through CUNA that we're going to build. We're showing the loving culture. And this isn't about white, black, brown, yellow. This mm -hmm. isn't about what faith. This is about all of us knowing that we are in this life together. And if we love each other, we could walk each other home. Because when we leave these earth suits, you got to go somewhere. It's a multiverse. You can't escape an endless multiverse. So we're going to pop back into the higher plane. And for eternity, we have an opportunity to spend the rest of eternity with our creator and with each other. And how cool is that? I mean, it, there's no word to describe it. But 
and and this is the practice. This is the classroom for that. Yeah, we need may, to refine how we love each other here. I love the way your mind thinks. There has to be a word for it. Some Buddhist in a temple has the word for what you're exactly describing, uh, doing the multi-dimensions, multiple lives, reincarnation, uh, you know, getting to live forever and ever uh, in, the, in the house of, of God, whoever you may hold yeah. that to be. Uh, that's, uh, that's beautiful, man. I'm glad you have that faith uh, to, uh, to put yourself uh, into to put- not to put pressure on anybody, though we were with God before we were in these earth suits in this dimension, and mm-hmm. there is another dimension coming, right? Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Nobody's flying away in the sky anywhere. When the dimension shifts, we're in a new body. We're in a celestial body for eternity. But there, um, Hebrews 9.27 says it's appointed for a man but once to die in the judgment. So though we're eternal beings and we've been alive since God created us, which I can't even begin to try to put my finger on when, um, in this dimension, in this earth suit, this is the only one we get. Mm-hmm. If we don't get another ride in this dimension, you get one, one and done, son. So if, if you're lost, if you need love, if, if you're thinking about hurting yourself, please don't. Because there were times that there were parts of me I wanted to kill, but I didn't want to leave my earth suit. So reach out to Dan, reach out to me, PM us on Facebook, find a way to to find us and just know that we love you and you're not who the world convinced you that you were. And then we can walk home together and you can wake up to who you truly are. And then you can go out and change other people's lives through the love of God. That that doesn't sound like a terrible idea, does it, Dan? No, my number's everywhere. Uh, Get in touch with someone. I think there's a a national number for suicide hotline is uh, 988. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, very simple yeah. to get somebody on yeah. the phone uh, to give you a talking to, yeah. to let you know that uh, th- there's people in the world that love you. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to keep you too much longer. Uh, I know you have rehearsal. That's very important. Yeah. You want to give the people the best possible show that you can give them. And I love that. Practice does make perfect. Uh, you never be perfect, though, but uh, you can practice. You can head towards that perfection. Yeah. You know, her being a teacher, we talk about doing your best to be correct. But I have noticed if you do that consistently, you do have these little moments of what might seem perfect. When when I when I finished her song, it took me I wrote it in an hour, but it took me 30 days to produce. Right. It it took a while before I could even get my head around like if if it was done because you're so excited. You want the song to be done. Because you want to share it, you, you know, I want to send it to her. And then I listen to it and I'm like, kind of like Dewey Cox. If you remember Walk Hard, remember the Dewey Cox story with John C. Riley? Yeah, kind of a, a, a loose a, a loose Johnny Cash type of story, uh, kind yeah, of. <laughs> and, he, and he's listening to it and he turns around and he's like, it's not done yet. I always think of that every time I get to that point. But what's neat about it for me in in the artistry of it, I suppose, I can't think of another way to put it is when it's done, it's done. I know when it's done. I, it, it's, it, and it's an Ellie song, new song, Ellie, uh, my Ellie actually is, is the name. Um, it's as perfect as I could make it. Okay. So you're not going to George Lucas or Steven Spielberg, the thing and go back uh, 10 years later and, and re-record it or, uh, you know, fix things that you might have found i you know but i hey there is that that sting did re-record um uh oh my gosh oh uh oh he he re-recorded quite a few songs but at least one song that i can remember that he redid in 97 and it was uh he brought out some of the background vocals that were different you know it's uh it's not unheard of to re-record your song I think when you when you have a uh, remember when the police reunited they had uh, they did that that almost techno version of every breath you take or something like yes. that. Yes, and I played that. Very, Love it. Very interesting. Yeah, I play it at certain clubs, cool. certain yeah. parties. In its time, but um, yes, some some music is timeless. And back to rehearsal. 
it was Bob Umfris, my best buddy and bass player, who, when we started this a few years ago, before Mark Hume and Flip Perkins showed up and mm -hmm. we became bad whores, he's like, we just we, we get together every Tuesday night and we and we and we practice. And I thought, that's cool, man. I've always wanted to do that, but we don't even have shows. And he's like, it doesn't matter. We just practice. We keep working on it. And he even told me back then, he goes, Michael, you know, one of the problems we're going to have is if bands ask us to open for them, they're going to ask us one. They're not going to have us back. And, you know, that was a little bit of a sticking point, I think. And I think there were also places that kind of had their own horses in the race. And it's interesting how I got a message a few days ago from somebody in regards to a club that wouldn't hire us because the manager of the club, and it was a really nice music hall, mm -hmm. and they were man they, he was managing one of the bands that were playing there. And the person that messaged me said, boy, did they back the wrong horse. The, right, the, the bad horse, but if you will. Asked, you know, yeah, back the bad horse, you know. Actually, don't back the bad horse. There's a significance to the the, the bad horse that I'll, I'll 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 let go of down the road. Okay. Um, but I think you know practicing anything um, that you're passionate about, it, it, it has, you just get better at it. And that every young artist out there, I mean, I had songs 20 years ago that I thought were the best songs ever. I listen to them now and I go, yeah, that was, that was pretty good. Good try, kid. You know, they just weren't. But you just keep going. If you love what you're doing, whether it's having your own podcast like you do, you're, you're, you're living your passion. I admire that. I love you for it. Whatever it is, if it's, you know, being a big brother at the YMCA or whatever your thing is, whatever your passion is, do it and do it well. I like it. And it doesn't necessarily, yeah, it doesn't have to be your day job. Um, I'm really blessed in that way because I believe me, I, I can't even count how many jobs I did for 30 years, man, just painting and all these other things just to get all these wonderful children raised. And it, it's, it's just, it's an amazing time. But even in it, remember to always, you know, that middle wave, when things get really good, don't go bananas, just stay in the middle wave because they're going to come back down. And then they'll go back up. But but that middle wave is that joy. And if you stay in that wave of joy while everything else is going absolute bananas, you're good. You, you'll, you'll, you'll make it. And you haven't failed until you quit. Well, we might have so mentioned it before you that, you, you know, you do the job that's going to suck your soul so you can do the job that's going to fill your soul with joy. Uh, so, yeah, you did what you had to do to be a good father, to be a good husband, yeah. to be a good person, a good upstanding member of society. We all do that. We all have have those uh, dichotomies where we do stuff because we have to and then we do stuff because we love to. And I'm glad that you have the love to as well. And your okay, your practices. Do you open your practices? Do you have people that come by and sit in and kind of listen to your practices, or is it something that's very private, very personal? Just the four of you uh, in a room, you know, playing, playing. No girlfriends, uh, no other, no outside influences. Just the four of you. Yeah, that was established early that it was just. Uh, no, I mean, I think we had uh, Steve Fulton from Audio Labs come by one day. We had uh, uh, maybe one other person come by in regards to recording just to hear. That. And this is over about two and a half year period of getting mm -hmm. this stuff ready. But yeah, there's no, we're, we're not there to perform, you know. And I think what happens is when you bring your partners, you want to perform, which can give you a little extra adrenaline, but we're not there. To, to feel like that we're there to build songs we're there to this brotherhood is um is so powerful when we're working together in music that um we didn't want anything to get in the way of it we didn't need a relationship issue or a wife or a girlfriend that that is tired and wants to go home we, we just didn't need any of that we, we just really needed that space to create and we've kept that the standard I mean, there's just, we, we, nobody comes to the rehearsal and, but everybody can come to the shows, man, everybody, because what, what this band is doing by God's grace and favor is, um, 
I think the message of love, I believe the message of love that we convey in everything that we're doing is why this music is just exploding all over the world. It, 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 it has to be that. Because there's a lot of good music out there. But it's this frequency of love that we bring to everything that we do. Um, and back to, you know, love for self, love for each other. First and foremost, love for God. It's just love, love, love. I mean, it's like I, we should almost work in, like Ellie and I, um, I was sitting there one day and I sent her a, a song that I was listening to. And it was Get Together by the Youngbloods. And she goes, when I meet you on Friday, I'm going to tell you what that song means to me. And that synchronicity, you know, that love is but a song we sing, fears away we die. You can make the mountains ring or make the angels cry. You know, I was a pastor by proxy many years ago. Send a little chills up my worship. spine. Mm. And people came up to me, a couple people came up and they're like, is this like a hippie church? Because you're not playing Michael W. Smith or you're not playing, you know, uh, Israel Houghton. And I said, well, I, I play those songs too. They're great artists. But come on, people now. My lonely brother is about to get together. Try and love one another right now. What's wrong with that? Why can't we do that? Why can't we play that? Why can't we feel that way again you know <laughs> that is some and, hippie and, stuff and man but that, it's hey there ain't no pro no ain't no ain't I'm, no, ain't no problem with some hippie stuff man i like uh the movement the 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 message of love uh the summer of love 67 you know just uh feelings of of being together and and not trying to harm each other and the segregation thing come on stop it. It, it, it you know get get together love your brother love your sister love everyone around you no matter who they are uh, the, the hippies had their their ideas you know whether they went completely the right way or the wrong way you whether uh, whatever you feel about them you know i think uh i don't know I, could i have been a hippie i don't think so but hey I, I, I do dig what, what what was going on, the message. I had no idea that I was a hippie. But apparently, and it's funny, even back when I was a pastor, I, 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 had, I had long hair, I had my beard, and uh, people used to call me the hippie, like the gangs in town, First Street Gang, and and the Bloods, and all these gangs that were in this neighborhood. And I knew all these dudes, and, you know, they were chill. I told them. Hey, just don't do any crazy stuff while I'm here with my family. And they were, they stayed true to that for three and a half years. And, but they used to call me the hippie because I was always talking about love. And I just, there's so much to that premise that, and I won't go into how I kind of cracked the mold and opened up some new neurotransmitters. We won't go there, but I will say it was organic. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know, if, if you're locked into something that isn't working, what's the definition of insanity? I'm trying to do the same thing Doing over and over. the same thing repeatedly and expecting a different result, right? Oh, yeah. So, you know, the, these are the things that, that I think, and I, and I know that we're doing it, which brings me so much sustainable joy. Not happy. Not happy I'm on Dan Key's show. I'm happy. Oh, after the show, you know, after we rock thousands of people, I go back and go, oh man, I'm bummed out, the adrenaline's gone. You're going to have those moments. But joy is when you know that you know who you are and you can share that love with other people. And w when we love ourselves, it doesn't mean you're selfish, even though you're self hyphen ish, you're thinking about you. But when you start thinking about other people, you start how, how is what I'm going, how, any decision, men especially, I'll tell you this right now, let's go see you two ladies. How is the decision that I'm about to make going to affect other people? And you don't live your life based on that because you can get manipulated to move a lot of different ways mm -hmm. living your life that way. But once you're sound enough to knowing who you truly are, I think about that. I think of every word I say. I think about how is what I'm about to say going to represent Ellie, my amazing children, my grandchildren, my band, 
my brothers, um, my community. <clears throat> How, you know, I had a song that was up and that I took down and I, I used the word S in it, right? And I, believe me, I, I think I said BS earlier. I, I don't, sometimes strong emotion requires strong language and I'm not above, you know, throwing one out there every once in a while, but it was so unnecessary mm. that I took the song down. Mm. Because what I'm thinking about more than anything right now, Dan, and I'll, I'll leave you with this, is my legacy of love. What am I leaving behind in my legacy of love? Not just the music that tells the story of, of what I've been through and how I overcame it, and I'm still overcoming till the day that I leave my earth suit and go home. What is my legacy of love? What's going to resonate after I'm gone? When people hear songs, they want to hear me saying, I'm in deep and up shit creek, she's out the door. They don't want to hear that. I took that song down. That's stupid. You know, I, I didn't know. I was a different man when I recorded, right? So um, <laughs> I think I, I know this, Dan. We're better together. Um, you and I make a great team. We should have our own show together. <laughs> I'm game. Which have the the Dan Keys Michael Rose radio yeah, show. Yeah, but do you know that you put you you <laughs> took that kidding, song man. down, and there's a place for that song. That is a song that you sing with your buddies at a backyard party. You're back there. You're unwinding. The week uh, of work has been sucking your soul, and you start singing that song. I, I wish you hadn't have taken it down because it's a part of you. It's a part of your history. You're writing your story. You're writing your book through song. You're writing, and, and that is a part of your life. It's where you were. I can see your, I can see your point. But when I'm when I'm talking about legacy, yeah, the you, song has the same effect if I sing. I'm in deep enough the creek stays out the door. Not quite. Now, not quite. I have to not, I have to push back on that. Not, it's not quite the same. On, I, I'm not thinking about but he, but see here's the thing. Though I love the guys at their backyard barbecue having a few beers listening to that song. If they want to rock like that and listen to some cuss words and stuff, listen to my brother Kid Rock. I love his work, you know. Listen to something else. I'm, I want to leave music behind that when my grandkids and my great grandkids hear it, I want it to be honorable. All right. And, and I felt like there's a time for, there's time for a word like that. Yeah. As long as you don't celebrate it, was, it. In every chorus, it was unnecessary. Yeah. yeah it, it was just, it was overdone. It, it just wasn't needed. And, and it's, you know, I'm being faithful to the art and I'm not trying to erase my history. Yes. And I'll re-release that song but I don't need it in every chorus. And I might even say it on the last chorus, but when I'm playing Cuna days and I see one baby, yes, I'm not saying that, you know? So, so there's a balance to it where I think the art is more important um, than being, I don't know what the word is. You An know, adult. Guys that do you, that. You, you, you listen to some crazy yeah, you've uh, you've you've shaped your life. You've become an adult. Uh, you know that. Okay, the relationships that you had, that uh, awesome. you broke. You, you can break up amicably. Uh, you know, when you're in high school and you're a kid and you're just learning about uh, boy meets girl, boy loses girl, uh, boy goes crazy and and uh, toilet papers girl's house, and uh, you know just you know just trying to show off and show out. No, you've grown. You, you're an adult. You know that you can break up amicably and still be friends. I'm friends with a lot of the girls that I went out with, which shows, uh, you know, I, I feel like I have some kind of a character. Uh, you know, I'm, I, I think some of them are on my Facebook, and my wife is not, you know, doesn't care too much about that. You know, she's okay that I'm still friends with people that I've, I've had, you know, you know, been, been with them in my life. And, and I'm just, I'm so stoked that all that led to where I'm at right now. And it's just getting better and better. And your story, you're writing it. And it's, man, it's just getting better and better. It's, 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 you're, uh, you keep singing that song and that, uh, you, that story is in song. Uh, the bad horse, man. You guys are great. Well, it's a good, it's a, thank you, brother. It's, it's a good song. And, 
you know, I'm going to edit that part. We'll Good. put the song back up. I, I didn't kill the song. I love the song. Good. And and it really does tell a story, you know, all those nights that I got faded when I tried, tried, tried to drink away the reasons why I cry, cry, cry. And then all that I've wondered can't search anymore. I'm in deep enough to creep. She's out the door. I mean, it's a really cool bluesy EA B minor seven. It's a very simple song. <clears throat> it's just a really nice 12 bar. And what I really like about it is I have the best drummer and in, in one of the best drummers in the world, absolutely the best drummer in Flip Perkins in the Pacific Northwest. And his shuffle on that song, we used to open with it because his shuffle that he plays on the snare is just insane. So that song is still on the live show. Well, he uses I those little brushes. I guess he he well, uses those little brushes. Yeah, yeah, he uses the brushes. Yeah. I like that and sound. He's a, he's a trippy guy. When we're playing, sometimes he'll turn the beat backward, and we just keep rocking, and then he brings it. It's a freak show with these dudes, and I get to go do it in just a few minutes. So on that note, I will tell you this. I love you like a brother, and I love you all. And, and my brothers in Bad Horse, we really do love you, and we care about you. And like I said earlier, this music isn't for us, but through us. And it's yours, really. It's medicine that I make when I write for me. It's medicine that we make together. And then I share it with my friends. And I hope it, you know, it not only tells a story of where I've been and what you can overcome, but we still have stuff coming. There's still stuff coming we're going to have to overcome. That's part of life. But we're better if we do it together. And I love you all very much. And I can't thank you enough. If you if you would kindly please go on uh, badhorse.shop. We have our merch store up finally, and and the money that you spend in our merch store is what funds us going back into the studio. So you're just you're giving us a donation. I'm giving you a T-shirt so we can go make more medicine. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Dan. I, I do love you, man. You're doing a great job. I'm, I'm so proud of you, and I'm so happy to have been asked to be on the show again. Thank you. Well, there you have it, party people. Michael F. Rose, a very nice man, a very spiritual man, and a great storyteller. Man, he could rattle off uh, parts of the Bible that that people may have forgotten about. He's He knows more about what's in that book than you may uh, know not know about your best friend. How about that? No, it's nice. It's nice to to have a book of instructions, whether you believe it or not. There's lots of good information. Uh, you you may, may or may not treat it as a historical document, but there's some history in there. It's a, a good guide in lots and lots of things. So so check out the the Bible and uh, read it. Well, at least one time, you know, like like any other book that's on your shelf, you could find a Bible in, in a lot of hotels. <laughs> And I guess for good reason. Well, is Gideon Bible still a thing? I don't know. We didn't even discuss that. But he rocks on, man. The guy's a, a rocker going to some festivals. Make sure you follow Michael F. Rose and Bad Horse on the feeds. I left all the links in the in the show notes below. So uh, stalk the band. Stalk the man and find out more what's going on. Always a good time with Michael F. Rose talking about the Bad Horse band or just bad horse just bad horse like uh you know people sometimes will call me dj dan or dj keys dan nope just keys dan just keys dan because because uh calling it a band kind of puts it in a box there's there's more to him more to michael f rose and more to the bad horse than uh, simply being a band they have a a show element and a teaching element as well so uh yeah there's more than meets the eye, like a transformer. I don't know. Every time more than meets the eye comes up in a sentence, I think about transformers, more than meets the eye. Why did that just come up on the Michael F. Rose podcast? No, I don't know. <laughs> That's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Thank you, Michael F. Rose, for coming back on the show and giving me a good talking to. Always good to converse with you, my man, and uh, to have a show together. Eh, I'm game, you know, even every, even sporadically, even once a month, even once or uh, twice a month, whatever. If you got stuff to say, I, I got ears to listen. And there's two ears and one mouth, so listen twice as hard as you talk. Yeah, before you talk. 
All right, party people, that's it for this edition of What Makes You Famous. Now, if you, yes, you, my loyal listener, if you'd like to tell your story, I encourage you to give me a call, 501-470-6386, or email keysdan at aol.com. That's it for me. It's keysdan, radiowhat.com, djlittlerock.com. Peace. I'm out of here.